you've brought out two major documents since your stint the economic survey and the budget both of them paint a fairly um, confident picture of, a, in the, of the indian economy than where we are right now going into the next year um it's been quite well received by the markets and they've said that this is the best you could have done in the present circumstances what makes you so confident about the uh, growth n- growth number the growth band that you've given that from 5% we'll move on to 6.1 at the least and possibly 6.7 at the highest level well first let me say that we are in a period of a uh, great deal of uncertainty both in the global economy but of course also in india because i think we are at the point where we're turning around from a deceleration of growth from lofty heights of 9% down to 5 and now we i think trying starting to pick back up so precisely when that turn around happens uh, you know is often difficult for economists to to forecast as you know the national bureau of economic research takes 2 years to forecast the bottom of a recession but that said uh, a number of policies have been put in place that we think will help us uh, uh, revive uh, you know the the kind of growth we had before and of course that takes time uh, and so for next year we say well these policies are in place we need investment back we're taking some actions to get investment uh, going but we think that there is a range of possible outcomes 6.1 is uh, approximately the lower bound and uh, 6.7 if if all goes well uh, we should reach that now uh, of course uh, these aren't uh, these are forecasts we should take them as they are dr rajan what do you think is the the new potential growth rate for india are we now in a new normal where we're looking at growth of uh, most about 7% or will we go back to the days of 8 9% growth well i mean everything depends on what else you do right because uh, to have a stronger potential we have to create the kind of underlying capacity uh, to support that 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 growth rate which means think like skill building so that more people as you grow at a faster rate and you create more jobs more people are there to fill them and it doesn't just result in higher wages uh, and inflation so we have to do all those if we do all those i have uh, no uh, doubt in my mind that we could grow at double digits uh for 10 15 years without a problem but we have to take those actions uh including building out our infrastructure doing more deregulation in business and uh skilling our workforce uh, uh, providing a variety of skills not just education we don't just need phd's we also need plumbers and can we get that range of skills in the workforce in the budget uh, numbers that were put out uh, uh when when you came in and took up this job uh, things were Uh, things were really not looking up uh, you had a fiscal deficit number which is uh, seeming way out of control uh, now that the numbers have come in you've managed to get the give a picture of about 5.2% fiscal deficit next year's 4.8% um do you think the rating agencies are now convinced uh, a, a downgrade is a uh, next to impossible now you would say? well i i can't speak for them yeah. but uh, but right from the outset i think the finance minister has said that uh, it is very unlikely that uh, first he said we should not be downgraded but he also felt a downgrade was unlikely and and i think that's right i think that um, you know if you look at the underlying potential in india uh, you look at our public debt you look at our history of servicing it uh there is no reason to believe that india is anywhere near the kind of difficulties that you see in countries for example in peripheral uh europe so um i don't think that we are a below investment grade country but i do think that the actions that the finance minister said he would carry out and has carried out uh since uh since august last year uh do suggest that uh, you know financial markets should find policy making credible and that uh, whatever has been said will actually be will be undertaken one of the major concerns that the finance minister has listed out in his uh, budget speech was the current account deficit that's the other area of concern that the rating agencies and a lot of research houses globally have uh, re- um, have said that uh, seems to be the if re- seems to be india's real problem what's the game plan there well first uh, we too in india see the current account deficit as a measure of the need for macroeconomic stabilization 
Interestingly, uh, my sense is that one of the measures that could bring down the current account deficit is lower inflation. I, uh, I would argue that part of the reason for the current account deficit is the huge imports of gold, about 3 percentage points of GDP. And that's prompted in large part, uh, or in some part at least, by higher inflation rates which render fixed income financial assets less attractive. So my sense is as inflation comes down, as people see interest rates coming down, they move into longer term financial assets. In fact, we see CDs, for example, growing pretty fast at this point. Uh, that will take some of the impetus to go and buy gold off. But I think uh, we have to, in a sense, export more. Uh, difficult in a, in a fairly uh, stagnant uh, world economy, but likely to pick up. We've already seen the last two export, monthly export numbers look up likely to pick up as the world economy starts growing once again. Good news from the United States, good news from China will help in this regard. Um, but also, uh, I think we have to be very careful about the financing of the current account deficit. Right now, that's the, that's the part of the current account deficit we can actually have the most effect on. And so we're trying to make sure the financing is either FDI or in rupee instruments through foreign institutional investors. And the finance minister has said repeatedly, that we're going to try and ease the way for foreign institutional investors to come into rupee markets by trying to reduce the transaction costs of them getting in and looking at a variety of issues that they have in actually entering these markets. Uh, as far as the FI investments, uh, investments are concerned, there were these issues of the car, the tax residency. There is a general feeling among foreign investors that they are not as welcome in this country as they should be because tax authorities are allowed to get them. I mean, is that a good position to be in right now for a country which requires uh, those precious foreign well, inflows? Well, first, I, I think the finance minister has said repeatedly, and I've uh, said it also in a variety of fora, that we welcome uh, foreign investors. And there is no, absolutely no attempt to, quote unquote, get them. Uh, and in, in a sense, what we're working on is continuously trying to make the environment more attractive so that they can come in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pleasant, uh, uh, welcoming uh, environment. And we believe, not, it's not just about financing the current account deficit, we believe having more foreign investors in our market will help improve liquidity, help improve the kind of experience that domestic investors have. So there is no question uh, uh, that, that we want them. Now, in terms of some of these tax uh, rulings and so on, I mean, for the most part, uh, you know, uh, there are specific incidents or specific cases, uh, and, you know, for a variety of coincidental reasons, they all seem to be uh, coming at the same time. Uh, but again, there is no intent to open up a whole new host of, uh, of cases uh, against foreign investors. And hopefully the kind of clarifications that came uh, before the budget and uh, after the budget uh, will help assuage some of the uh, concerns. Any steps that would come to your mind that or would ensure that foreign in, uh, institutional investors stay here for the long term? Because that seems to be a problematic area because they don't seem to be uh, as excited about investing in the country in, uh, in instruments that are of longer tenor. Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, in a sense, it's hard to fault them because the longer tenor instruments, fixed income instruments, don't necessarily uh, at this point give a substantially higher yield than short tenor instruments. The yield curve is relatively flat. Why would you take on uh, sort of more long term risk if you can stay in the short term? As a country, we would prefer them to go long term. And so that certainly is, is sort of a, a minor difference in opinion between investors and, and, and us. But if you look at where a majority of the FIR money has gone, it's gone into the equity markets, which are the longest term, instru term instrument possibly uh, that one could have. So in that sense, I'm, I don't think it's entirely right that they have issued the shorter, they've, they've, uh, they've not gone into the longer term instruments and stayed only in the short term. What we need to do is provide them more reason to go into longer term fixed income instruments. And my sense is as they see interest rates coming down with inflation coming down, uh, they will uh, see some value to go into the longer term because now they will benefit from the uh, principal, uh, the 
um, the appreciation in the value of the bond as uh, as interest rates come down. What about uh, foreign direct investment? I mean, any specific measures that are well, we are looking at every uh, every um, sort of limit on foreign direct investment and trying to gauge whether it's necessary or it can be can be lifted. Um, and and so that's something that is under active consideration. And uh, let's see what what happens.